Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how you guys can create a remote process injection in C. Uh, basically, what a remote process injection is, or a process injection, is a technique that we use that we inject a DLL or shell code into a remote process instead of injecting it into a local process. A few of these process injection techniques we have here are, is just our classic DLL injection. Um, DLL is just dynamic with libraries. Uh, I don't know if you've seen DLL files before, you probably have. We also have a reflective DLL injection. We have shellcode injection, which is the process we're going to be doing today. And we have an APC Q code injection. Okay, so here's some of the steps we're going to be using to implement this. All of these down here are all functions that we're going to be implementing. Basically how this works is we will have two processes. We have our malware exe process which will then get injected into the victim exe file. So basically how this will work is the victim exe file will be running normally, but in the background, there will be the shell code that we've injected that is also running at the same time. It could do anything. It depends on what the shell code is said to do is what it end up doing. And uh, yeah, let's get right into creating this program. I'm using Visual Studio Code 2022 to do this with. I've set up a blank CPP file first thing we want to do is include our standard input output so stdio.h this is our standard input output so now we're going to include and i would include our windows api so this is just windows.h windows.h oops i can't type okay windows.h simple okay next i'm going to create a main function and in this main function, the first thing we're going to need here is our open process. So how do we get our open process is we create a handle and this handle will be, I'll just call it target process handle because we need to grab the handle of our target process and we're going to say open process and in here. If I actually hover over this, actually set it for a second, we can actually see that we have three parameters that pass into here. So we have a desired access, a uh, boolean for inherent handle, and a DW process ID. I actually recommend that if you want to learn more about these function calls, you can actually look them up. Windows MDN actually has information about this, so uh, open process, I'd search that up. Right here it is. If you open this up, you can actually learn more about this. So it will actually give you an explanation of what everything in here is doing. So the first one here, um, the first one here is desired access. So in this spot, we're just going to put in here process underscore all underscore access. So we want full access. And if you actually go to this link, It'll actually tell you in here process all access um and it'll actually tell you what this does right over here and uh, i don't i'm not gonna read through all of that i just know that that's there okay so the next one here says be in here handle we actually want to do that so i'm gonna say true and then the final one is a process id um, that process id will be the the target process that we're grabbing we're going to grab the process id and i'll get that in a second so we'll skip that for now um the next thing we need is if we look back at our list is going to be the virtual alloc ex um so let's go into here and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to do a void pointer exec mem underscore mem and then I'm going to go ahead and actually, we can actually do an equal here. And we're going to type in virtual alloc ex. And then we're going to go like this. And again, if we hover over it, it will tell us what we need to put in here. So we want a the uh, handle, which is just target process handle. Next up. It says here, um, LP void IP address. 
Um, we're just gonna let Windows decide that one, so we'll put in no for that one. And then we see here we want size. Okay, so this is just gonna be the size of our shell code, but we don't have that right now. I'm gonna skip that for now. I'll get back to that. And finally, it wants actually not finally. Um we want the allocation type. For the allocation type, I'm just gonna put we're gonna want mem underscore commit. And then we're gonna want uh, mem underscore reserve. And then finally, we want D word FL protect. So I'm looking back here at the documents, I kind of forgot what I need in here or what this exactly does. Um, yeah, so this just gives it access, okay. So we actually need the the read write access. All right, we need to, actually we need to execute read write. This gives it full privileges, so let's get that. Okay, so now we've gotten that. Basically what this is doing, is this gonna go ahead and allocate memory, memory in the remote process. That's what this is gonna be going ahead and do. All right, so next up, and I don't actually I didn't tell you guys, but this is the handle that stores um, remote process a handle or yeah remote process handle just like that and yeah so next up if we look back at our list we need to write to process memory so let's go ahead and do that so we're gonna do that by typing write process memory which is that should be capital w write process memory and once again, this will actually tell us what we need to put in. So we need the first to handle. So again, target process handle, comma. We need the IP base address. So that's just going to be exec mem. Uh, we need the IP buffer. IP buffer is just our shell code. So I actually don't have that right now. We'll put that in in a second. And the next thing we actually need is the size of that. So we'll need the size of the show code. I'll put that in in a second. Okay, and then finally, we have size T number of bytes written. We'll actually set that to null. No. Okay, so let's actually create our show code. Um, let's go up to the top. And we're gonna do a char, and let's call it, um, let's call it buff. Um, but yeah, let's just do that, and I'll do that is equal to something and obviously we don't have anything to put in here at the moment but we will get that we're actually gonna put size of and then buff in here uh i think it's the size oh if like that not like that okay but and now we're gonna put in here buff and then we're gonna do the same size of okay and then buff just like that pretty straightforward basically what this is doing is just copying um the buffer in our exec mem region next up is just create remote threads so let's go ahead and do that i'm gonna need a another handle actually let's do that up here handle and i'll call this one target process thread target process thread and we're gonna now go down here and type in target process thread and we're gonna set that equal to our create remote thread right and again covering over you can actually see all the what we need to put in here so the first thing is obviously going to be uh, what is it? Target process handle. Well, first, so this will need our target process handle. It's the first thing that we'll need our. It says we want an IP thread attribute. We're actually going to set that to no. And it's a deal of sex size. We're going to set that to zero. For the next one here, we're going to do. We'll do this LP thread underscore start underscore routine. 
for routine and then we're going to type in over here exec mem and then for the IP parameter it's going to be set to null and then we're just going to do 0 comma 0 for the rest just like that so basically what this is doing is it's going to go ahead and create a um a thread that executes in exec mem's um allocation so like i said we're going to be getting the process notepad i have my notepad opened up here and now i'm going to go ahead and launch up um process hacker 2 so you want to download this program it's free and when i do that i'm going to search up notepad and I'll see notepad and right here I'll see my process ID one two three seven four four every time you launch notepad again the process ID will change so it won't be the same for you as me so make sure you check yours let's create our shell code now actually you know what we have to close this handle so we're gonna type in close handle and I'm gonna type in here target process handle or get the process handle so i'm going to close it off with that handle and then we want to go ahead and return zero just like that and yep should be good to go there okay so now we need our shell code which we don't have currently so i'm over here in my linux machine and i'm actually going to go to here clear that out real quick and you're just going to type in this command and and we're going to use msm venom i've already done this before obviously um dash p and we're going to use the reverse the shell reverse tcp okay and you're actually going to this uh command will basically allow you to go to control your pc on this remote machine so basically once this file is run the exe is made and it's run and you run it once you go back to your calling machine you should be able to gain access to your pc over here but anyways you want to type in lhost and type in your ip here um obviously my ip is right there i blurred it out but if you don't know your ip it's obviously i have config and Right here, you want this one that's right here. You will see INET, and then right after that will be the IP. And I'm checking to make sure. Yeah, so now you want to type in L port, and we're gonna use 444. Then you want to type dash FC. Once you do this, it will generate you some shell code. Okay, it'll take a little second, but there you go. You have some shell code. Now you can copy this shell code and copy selection. And we're going back into our Visual Studio here and we're going to paste it in. Okay, so make sure that you have a semicolon at the end there and uh, everything in quotes. So I'm actually going to format this so it looks a little better. One, two. Okay, so there's our show code. Injected. Or not injected put in and I think we should be good to go here if everything works correctly we should be able to build this so I just control s and then do control b to build I'm in release mode by the way I don't think it matters but I mean hit control b to build as you can see build started took zero or 0 0.089 seconds and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to tools I'm gonna go up to command line I'm gonna go up to developer command prompt and for me specifically here, I actually have to CD into another folder. Um, I don't know how it's going to be for you because my thing is set up that way. You want to go to where your CPP file is stored at. So that's just where mine is. Mine's stored into a proc inject folder that I called it and then it's stored again into another proc inject folder. Okay, so what you want to do from here is type in CL slash TC for slash t capital tc like that and then you want to type in the name of your cpp file so mine's process injection dot cpp all right and press enter 
and they give me a bunch of errors because I must have messed up somewhere. Let's see. Uh, okay, so I see. Oh yeah, I messed up right here. Okay, I don't know what I thought. Okay, there you go. Boom, just like that. <laughs> I should work now. Okay. It'll be obviously when you build it. Whoops. It won't tell you that, but yeah, there you go. Let's try this again. I'll go back to our thing. Okay, whoops. Get to that. And let's try this again. Boom. Okay, there you go. Okay, there you go. That's what happens when you're up at, what, 130 doing this shit. We have here our exe file and our object file. So we actually want to use the exe file. So energy that, just type in. Before I do that, if it works for you, it works for you. Oh, so where my mouse is oh there okay this is a command you're gonna want to type in i don't know if, if it works for you then that's good it's, i know it's not gonna work for me but you want to type nc dash nvlp 444 this is a port you select it and you press enter and it'll say listening for connections on that port and now when i go to launch my process injection.exe press enter Okay, <sighs> this is what happens. Windows deleted it because if I click on it, it tells me it is a Trojan. I'm gonna just disable my Windows Defender because I 100% forgot about this shit. I literally completely forgot that that was gonna happen. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna rebuild it because Windows decided to fucking delete the shit. All right, process injection dot exe and it's injected now and it didn't connect to anything here um because i don't know my thing is broken because my network some weird shit happened uh but if i go to here now and i open up my notepad.exe and right click and i go to properties and what i want to do is look over here at we have these read write x files i think these are all a bunch of read write executable files that i injected there should only be one in here i'm pretty sure but if i right click and i go to memory if i look into this x and i go back to our code uh this one doesn't have it but let's go to another one one of these should have it okay there it is fc 4883 E4 F0 E8 XE and so on. Uh, this is our shellcode that we just injected because I have been injecting like 20 million different shellcodes into the same process. I have a bunch in there, but that's because I was doing that because I couldn't get my my thing here to work because some weird shit's going on with my network. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. So I'm actually in here into my process injection folder and if I look into here I can actually see my exe file somewhere in here uh one of these folders Windows already deleted it but this is the object file but Windows already deleted it even though I did say about my my antivirus thing but whatever I think that's why it doesn't work because Windows keeps deleting it and it doesn't it never gets a chance to work i don't fucking know but but anyways that's all i got and uh yeah i'll see you all in the next one